What makes a house a home? We asked the people of Wales to enter their houses into Wales Home of the Year. Now our judges are visiting the top three from each region, choosing one each episode to go through to our national final. Scoring them on architectural merit, distinctive design and original style are Interior designer Mandy Watkins from Anglesey. What I'm looking for in a home is something that excites me, gives me that wow factor, just something I haven't seen before. Cardiff-based architectural designer Glenn Thomas. What I'm looking for in a home is innovation, originality and the unexpected. And leading the judging, Owain Wynne Evans. I'm looking for a home that respects its history but also makes space for modern day living. Oh, wow. come on. <laughs> I'm hoping for a room that I'm disappointed in. Bedroom? This is more like a dance hall. Honestly, guys, it's giving me, like, goosebump vibes. Wow. <laughs> I know. In the end, only one can be Wales Home of the Year. Today, our judges are visiting the shortlist from the southeast, and they're starting with a former nursing home in pont Built in the 1890s, the Croft is home to Susan, her husband Mick, and their two daughters, Ruby and Seren. It was a care home when we originally viewed it. The layout didn't necessarily work, so we sacrificed some of the bedrooms and just uh, reoriented the house to be more accessible. I love vintage. I love refinishing furniture. I like industrial, but also boho, and I love plants and flowers and all sorts, really. It all comes together. It's a bit of a melting pot. On the ground floor, the entrance hall leads to a spacious kitchen diner on one side and a sitting room on the other. The first floor has three bedrooms and a bathroom. The second floor, the master bedroom and ensuite, plus a guest bedroom. The property also has a cellar that has been converted into a speakeasy bar. Prior to the judge's arrival, we asked Susan to put a heart in her favorite place. This is my favorite spot. We can retreat here with a glass of wine and a good book of an evening, but also it's a party space. The children love to party down here, but so do the adults. Armed with only the basic facts about the property and its owners, the judges will now cast their eyes over the croft. This is a nice looking building, isn't it? Gosh, do you know, I'm coming up at an angle. It looks even bigger, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks quite high up, doesn't it? Because of this incline. And I can just imagine, especially on those top floors, you'd have a gorgeous view down across pont de and the valley there. It's a handsome mid-terrace, isn't it? It really is a magnificent building, isn't it? So first impressions are good, guys. Very looks good. great. Shall yeah. we explore? Yes, let's. Lead on. This is nice. This yeah. is nice. Hello, you three, how are you? <laughs> They're not impressed with us. <laughs> I love the original features here. Mm. Oh my gosh, the original plaster work here is stunning. The ceiling roses. This home has been renovated to a really high standard. Who doesn't love a period floor? And the grey blue on the walls really picks it up and it's quite warm because usually I find grey a really cool colour. I'm having a look through into this room, which looks very bright. Ooh. Shall we wander in? Please. Wow. This is nice. I love this kitchen. You know, you don't see this kind every day. So the white cabinets mixed in with a bit of walnut. The full four foot wide island unit with a flush induction hob, very ergonomic, very functional, and it would be a joy to cook it, I think. I'm also loving um, the hues on the wall, you know, like here it looks a bit stony, and then through here, that wallpaper's got a hint of like a soft line. The homeowner has repeated that colour pattern, which is always a really nice tip, and I love that huge lamp in the corner. This is a bit of fun as well, isn't it? But it's mixed with sophistication. I love the... I can just see a unicorn spear coming out the top of your head there, Robin. <laughs> but that's great, isn't it? And look at that ceiling. Oh, my gosh. The plaster work is absolutely stunning. And I just saw something earlier when we walked in that just made my heart so warm, and I don't even know why. This really cute little collection of trinkets. I think this is a stamp tray, isn't it? I'd love to know the story behind all of these little items. Some of them look old, some of them look like little children's toys. Maybe they've come from a holiday, but this is so cute. I love it. 
Oh, this is a nice room as well. Very warm feeling in here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this room is lovely. And we've got that lovely chimney breast in that kind of muted mustard colour. I think they've done a great job. I actually love this coffee table. I think it's a really kind of classy touch. There's something about this room that is quite fun. And I do wonder whether or not there are young people in this home. I'm talking about that really cute little giraffe on the wall. I wouldn't normally like something like that, but I think when you look at its context, I think it works really well. I love those touches as well, and I love the classic kind of Renaissance paintings blowing bubbles and, yeah. Oh, and I love the juju hats. You know what's great about it? There are three of them. Mm. Do you think the homeowner would mind? Yes, I do. Okay. Behave. Ooh! We're up in the roof. And it's really spacious, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love a Barcelona chair. I would just get out of bed and sit there all day and drink coffee, I think. That is such a beautiful piece. Do you know what I love? The layout here. The fact that they put the wall there in the middle of the room and then the bed in front of it. And what that gives you is that whole wall for your clothes. And can you have enough storage of clothes? No. I think there's a lot of thought has gone into the space planning of this room, the functionality, the circulation. There's no dead corners. You can walk behind the wall. It's brought into the room. I love these beams and I love that they've been painted this colour, actually, because a lot of the time when you have the original wood, the carpentry, it's just kind of taken back to its original colour. But no here, they've been painted. Also, there's a real Welsh touch behind us here. It's lots of pieces of material stitched together. And on it, we have loads of road names and areas and street names from Cardiff, which of course is just down the road from here. Mm -hmm. So we're getting a nice little Welsh connection there. Love that. Oh, come on, look at this. Talk about unexpected. Mm. Oh, look, the heart. I wondered where it was gonna be. There it is. It's definitely got a more grown up feel when compared to the rest of the home, which had the elements of fun. Oh my goodness, look at the floor, you two. That is stunning, isn't it? You can see brick slips, it's not wallpaper. So they've been added, but it does give that feeling of depth and texture and cavern-like space. I'm looking across there now, and they've devoted that whole area there to a gin bar. So there's just gins, there's all the paraphernalia to make your gin and tonics, and around the corner there's whiskey or whatnot. It's so nice, isn't it, for you to have an adult space um, in a family home. You know, we all need time out, and I think I'd be spending Far too many nights in here. <laughs> I think one of the things that gave it more of that speakeasy kind of vibe to me is when we approached the door and opened it and then started walking down those stairs, you could see the underneath of the stairs that lead up to the upper floors of this home. None of that had been covered. And you could see all of the original carpentry and woodwork, really the bits that you'd never normally see. The judges will now mark the croft out of 10. Mandy's score will be held back until the judges have seen all three homes when their combined scores will be revealed. The homeowners have put a lot of energy and dynamism into their themes and their colour palettes and their furniture. Every room has a different richness and a different feeling to it. Coming down into this wonderful, dark, sumptuous room was something I certainly didn't expect. The one room I felt let the home down for me was the living room. And although they had the touches of humour that we pointed out, I feel like the living room was perhaps a bit safe. But hey, if that's all I can pick out, then that says a lot for the rest of the home. I'm going to give this home a nine. In this home, I think the owners have been very clever in keeping the original charm of this property with all of the original features that we see here, but also injecting that little bit of fun into all of the spaces. And I think the younger members of this family feel that it's their home as much as the adults. Okay, there might be some things that are deco choices that aren't in line with what I would do, but hey, these are tiny things. I'm going to give this home an eight. You know, the styling, it's quite understated, but it's really effective. And I like the colour palette. That hall was particularly inviting, you know, like that bluey grey on the walls. And immediately you get the effect that it's going to be a bit of old and new together. So I can tell I'm in an old building, but there are contemporary elements. And there's a cohesion. It's been well thought out and the finish is good here. Next, 
Next up for the judges' consideration is a semi in Carleon. Built around 1930, Woodview is home to Jeanette and Rob. Its unassuming exterior hides a wealth of intriguing interiors. We absolutely love what we've done here. I'm passionate about the house. I'm passionate about the things we've put into it. And we've kind of built it up ourselves, haven't we? Yep. Doing everything, resalvaging, repurposing, like the French corbels on the wall here. Sometimes things don't have to be used the way they should be used. We've got shutters that we use as pictures. We've got salvaged meat hooks from France. So we use those for our pans. Every part of every room has got our stamp on it. It's just us and people usually really love that. The front door opens onto a compact living room, which leads to a kitchen, and beyond that, a large dining area and sitting room. Upstairs, a dressing room leads to a master bedroom with ensuite. There's also a guest bedroom and a separate bathroom. So, this is our favourite spot in the whole house. This is our garden room, um, where we hunker down in front of the fire in the winter and open the bifolding doors in the summer so that the garden literally becomes a garden room. Um, it's where our friends and family gravitate at Christmas, where we have great parties and get-togethers. Absolutely love it. This is our happy place. And now it's time for the judges to get their first glimpse of wood view. OK, well, a lovely traditional semi-detached, but... It's not giving anything away, is it? Yeah, you can't really tell what's going on behind the door or behind the windows. I do love that front door, though. It's certainly very well kept. Everything is nice and tidy. Nice frontage, nice bay trees. OK, well, enough talk. Let's go and see what's behind the doors, then. Sounds good. OK, so we're straight into the living room here. Yeah. Ooh! That's a cosy feel, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Ooh. You can tell that the owners of this home have put a lot of effort into styling it. You know, it's a very rustic look, but obviously that's the look that the homeowners went for. And it does feel very homely. You know, someone loves this home. You've got exposed rafters here. So, I mean, it is a very personal thing, whether you like that sort of exposed rafters, pub look, but it goes with the ethos of what they've done with the room. I think the building that this home is in is, what, 1920s, 1930s? I love the look of the 20s and the 30s, personally, as far as the decor is concerned. And sometimes, you know, both, I have a little bit of a problem when the interior doesn't quite match up, perhaps, with the era of the property. It's interesting. I don't think it has to be to your taste to appreciate the work and love that's gone in. I mean, I'm just looking to the right of me here, I love this matte black gilted mirror. And I love the timber here, I love the colour of the navy, the beautiful ornate detailing of the original fireplace. It's really, really special. This is the space that I wasn't expecting to be here at the back of the home. And look what I found here on the sofa, oh. the hat. So obviously this is the favourite spot for the homeowners and I can see why nice sociable space, large dining area, two sofas opposite each other, which is perfect for entertaining. And then I like the way they've got that workbench in the corner there. You know, it's used as a console table, so perfectly styled with an oversized vase, an oversized clock. You know, there's definitely a strong theme throughout this house. And I'm not a lover of fake bricks, so it's really pleasing for me to turn around and see that there's the original wall of the house, exposed, render off, sealed. Now, I suspect traditionally there would have been a series of small spaces here, maybe utility area, a lean-to, outbuilding, a toilet. So I think at some point, the owner's been very, very brave and got the plans in front of them and taken a big, thick red pen and drawn it through, knocking the walls down. And look what we're left with. We've got this wonderful four-metre open bifolding doors out to that incredible garden. Elsewhere within this space, there is a lot going on visually. There's not very much rest for the eye. But for me, the winner in this room is what we're seeing outside of it, that gorgeous garden. I just want to meander down there myself. Oh, a bedroom which has an ensuite as well. This is a nice airy room, isn't it? You know, like we've got a hint of the brick there and it's the same theme, but I'm enjoying this space a bit more because I can see more. There's less here, so I'm seeing the lovely wall lights and the oversized bedside lamps and then that perfectly styled bed. 
Yeah, looking around and we're spending more time in this house, I am starting to pick up on some of the details, you know. Looking into it, you can actually see some really beautiful pieces that are put on the wall. Uh, and I see a lot of French influences. I'm picking that up quite a lot, actually. Even things like these shutters that we have on the wall here, there were a pair downstairs as well. And I wonder whether or not the owners of this home have some sort of personal connection with France. And there's travel involved, you know, these pieces have been brought back lovingly and they're put on the wall as art which I think is absolutely wonderful. How will the judges score wood view? Glenn is holding back his mark until they've all seen the final home. One of the things that I love about this home is you step through it and you expect the building to stop at the back of what is the kitchen kind of diner area where the fridge is, but no, it goes beyond that. So you have this huge garden room at the back and it's such a tranquil setting as well. I love the colour schemes of this home. The colours used on the walls, I think, were really lovely in all of the spaces. They have included many French items, but I think for me to fully appreciate that, I would have liked to have seen a bit less going on with the decor here. I'm going to give this home a seven. This home was a total surprise for me. You never know when you approach a 1930s semi-detached what you're gonna get. At first, I wasn't sold on the style. It was too much for me, it was too complicated. And then as I went upstairs, it felt a bit more calm, it was lighter, there was less stuff competing with each other, so I felt I could appreciate that it was a loved home, and I think that's what's important. You know, the homeowners have obviously put their stamp well and truly on this house, and they've made it into a very comfortable home. I'm going to give this home an eight. There's a lot of richness in this house, and the more time I spent here, the more I looked around, the more I could really appreciate the authenticity of the decoration. For me, if I bring an object into my house that has particular relevance, whether it's historical or family, I like to give it some space, whether that be a concrete background, a polished wall, or whether that's just simply white and treated in a very minimalistic fashion. Clearly, decor is a purely subjective thing. But to me, the important thing is it's done with authenticity and it's done with genuine passion. Here, clearly, that is the case. The final contender from the southeast is this delightful single story dwelling just outside Chepstow. Sitting in the grounds of a large Grade II listed estate, Little Black Cabin was originally a pump house then a Borstal school. Since 2016, it's been home to Amy and Isaac and their two sons, Max and Levison. We've just decorated throughout, really, to put our style on it. Uh, we've done lots of the work ourselves, um, the bricks lit wall and the bathrooms. We've boarded up some doors and opened up others. My husband likes to buy art, so most of the art on display he's purchased. So it's quite like street art, a lot of it. And then we've sort of fitted our style around that art. Isaac and I are really proud of our house. Um, we've put a lot of love into it, and ultimately, um, I think we've achieved our goal of being a welcoming, friendly house. Beyond the front door is a spacious hallway that leads to a kitchen diner and onto a roomy living area. Further on is the master bedroom with ensuite. At the other end of the bungalow are two children's rooms and a separate bathroom. So this is our favourite spot in the house. It's the heart of the home and the views outside into the garden are just spectacular. Time for the judges to set eyes on Little Black Cabin. Ah, and there's our home. Look at it. I didn't expect to see a bungalow of this type in the competition, did you? Mm. I love a bungalow though, because they're so spacious, aren't they? And it's all on one floor and you don't have to hoover stairs. You're like, what's not to love? And it's actually quite unassuming. We've got just a very simple grey render. It's not giving any clues to the internal spaces. Listen to that. It's just so peaceful. Well, both, shall we venture inside? Absolutely. I'd like to. Let's go up the steps. Oh, well, we're welcomed into this gorgeous, light, bright little hallway. It's not that little at all, is it? It's not, actually, man. You're right. It's unusual to have a nice wide entrance with a seat and a mirror. First thing I spotted is this floor. Mm. I know it's a modern addition, but I love it when the detailing is flush. 
So they've got the plank floor, they've done a cutout, they've surrounded it with a timber and then this really nice colour toned tile floor. This hallway is nicely styled, isn't it? You know, a console table with a little traditional lamp, nice vase, and then you don't usually see this kind of arrangement of light in a hallway. They're most commonly found in dining rooms. So I'm getting a feeling there's a young family living here. Mm. Yeah, it's a lovely bright space and I feel like it has purpose as well because I imagine the sleeping quarters are down through that little mm. corridor, tucked away, and then straight ahead you have the view through to what I imagine is going to be the kitchen diner. Sleeping quarters? I call them bedrooms. <laughs> oh, darling, we don't call them that in Ammonford. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice big space. Oh, I like this. I like the... Well, you've got the garden there, which looks absolutely gorgeous. That garden is absolutely fantastic. And I'm suspecting that they've inherited this kitchen, you know, given what else we've seen, this isn't to their style. Because I'm sure we've all either bought or rented homes that have something in them that, OK, might not be to our taste, but then you, you apply your taste to it. And I think the owners have done this really well in the kitchen, if that's what's happened to you. I love these lights as well. I'm just going to go and have a closer look at them. They're so cute, aren't they? They're like little trifle glasses and also a cutesy little hat. Oh, this is such an adorable space. And look, here's the heart, you two. Oh, and yes. It's clear to see why they've placed it here, isn't it? Such a nice space, as you say, and that light is coming in. I think the owners of this home have great taste. I love the colour of this sofa. I love that wall. The decor is just gorge as well. What a nice space to spend time in. And you know what's nice? It's the transition between rooms. So as you're leaving and entering a room, it's so nice to have a different viewpoint. You know, here mm. we've got those tiled effect bricks at the back there so that's giving us a different vibe and I'm loving the sort of mid-century vibes of the globes in the ceiling and I do like a bit of country and you know how I love an ottoman with a tray and a scented candle and that's quite country looking isn't it whereas the rest of the room seems to be very mm. contemporary. This wall behind us, this artwork isn't really my taste but it works so well here. I particularly like the artwork, actually, Owen. I think it's very well curated, and each piece has, whether it's a political message or a sense of humour, they're all very unique individual, and they're not the usual prints you see on the walls. So I think there's a lot of thought being put into this. Another lovely space. Oh, and a little cat. It's sleeping. Hello, Haven't you heard the phrase? <laughs> <laughs> so gorgeous. <laughs> Cat's gorgeous. Room is gorgeous as well. The styling in this room. Oh, it's chef's kiss. I love the plants. We've got that big monstera over there. We've got a succulent in a basket and some spider plants up there as well. And look at that lovely sliding door into what I imagine is going to be the ensuite. And again, we're finding it simply styled. We've got a simple shelf that echoes the one we've seen in the lounge. So some plants, a book stack. And there's an area there for a dressing table to do your makeup, en suite through there. And then you've got sort of a dressing area here as well. So it's a fully functional, light and airy, gorgeous bedroom. We've got a beautiful old school style radiator there. And it's so unusual to have a whole wall devoted to the view in a bedroom because you're looking at what is, what, a six metre opening there? So that would be a huge steel for the rafters to tuck in. Um, and it's old, you know, this isn't a new addition, so that's rather wonderful. So how will the judges score Little Black Cabin? Owen's mark is being held back. This home has got a really nice feel about it, so it's quite unassuming as you approach it, and then when you enter it, it opens out to this fabulous bungalow, and then at the back of it is this magical garden, so a cracking space for a family to live. I love lots of rooms in this home, but there are some that I think that haven't quite got there yet, so I'd be interested to see how they evolve. I'm going to give this home an eight. There's something about this home that makes me feel really relaxed. I really love the decor. I think it's clean, it's slick, it's fresh, it's contemporary. I'm a huge lover of open plan living, and they're really lucky with the house here, where they've got this long space with a kitchen, dining, living space, all benefiting from that wonderful south-facing sunlight. And they've got the opportunity here with the roof to maybe vault it and have some huge roof lights bringing daylight into the spaces. 
I'm going to give this home a nine. I think the building probably hasn't always been a home. It's been repurposed at some stage into this. But whatever it was, that doesn't matter because now it's a gorgeous home with such a comforting, calming feeling inside. Okay, some of the decor I probably wouldn't choose myself, but again, that doesn't matter because the mixture of how the place has been decorated to how it's been accessorized, it's so harmonious. Now the judges have visited all three homes, it's time to see how their scores compare and reveal this week's finalist. First, it was the Croft in pont Mandy held her score back. I gave this home an eight. Glenn, you gave it a nine. Mandy? I loved the Croft. You know, it was a handsome, good-looking building. And as I walked in, I liked the finish and there was a cohesive look and feel to it. That basement was a particular gem for me. I love it when someone utilises the whole house. So for me, I gave it a nine. The Croft gets a nine from you, Mandy, which means the total for the Croft is 26. Mm. Next, Glenn is yet to reveal his score for Woodview in Caerleon. Mandy, you gave this home an eight. I give it a seven. Glenn. We've been to some homes where the architecture has kind of led the design, it's been done in subtle ways. This was the opposite end of the spectrum where the interior design led the whole look. And there's some beautiful pieces they've brought back and exhibited as sculptures. For me, however, it was too much. It's quite a small space and quite a dark space and there's a danger of over-design. I'd like those pieces to have breathed a bit and shone. So for me, I'll give the home a seven. A seven from Glenn. So the total for Woodville, you two, is 22. Still a really good score. Yeah. And finally, a wine scores Little Black Cabin in Chepstow. Mandy, from you, this got an eight. Glenn, you gave it a nine. I adored the Little Black Cabin. When we opened that front door and when we looked inside, oh, it just gave me such a feeling of joy and calm. The decor I thought was stunning in this home. Mm -hmm. Little pops of colour then threw into the living room and all along the back wall of the home, we had those gorgeous glass doors looking out into the garden. For that reason, I gave Little Black Cabin nine, which means the grand total for Little Black Cabin is 26. That means we have a draw between Little Black Cabin and The Croft. Oh, it's a difficult one, this, isn't it? Because they were both gorgeous homes. There's no denying Little Black Cabin was beautiful. You know, it made me hanker for a bungalow again. That garden was something else. But The Croft tipped it for me because the finish was impeccable. And for me, one of the criteria is also ambition. You know, what are the goals that they set themselves? And I think the scale of the Croft was just really, really impressive and the level of detail and the surprise. So for me, I think the Croft just picks the top. Should we put the Croft through? I Please. think so. The winner for the South East then is the Croft. Excellent. Yeah. Happy days. They I'm will happy. be very happy, won't they? Yeah, they will be. It was gorgeous. The Croft comes out top in the South East and is one step closer to claiming the title Wales Home of the Year. Next time. Oh, this is something else. The judges visit the Southwest. <laughs> Woo! That's pink. As the search continues for Wales Home of the Year. From campsites to castles, the hunt is on to find Scotland's greatest escapes. Press red to watch on iPlayer. Calm the chaos and feel ready to take on the world with the music and meditation podcast. Listen now on BBC Sounds. Up next, Coronation Taylor's Fit for a King.